Connections between ASEAN and the Belt and Road Initiative were broadly discussed at the Belt and Road Summit 2016 and attending the focus panel was Suryo Bambang Solicito, Chairman of Kadin Indonesia Honorary Council and founder of PT Satmarindo Group. So Mr. Solicitor, thank you very much indeed for joining us here today and um, in your panel discussion you were looking really at ASEAN, the importance of ASEAN. Is Indonesia the most important of the countries in ASEAN from the point of view that it's the largest country that there is in ASEAN? It is not only the largest but uh, geographically also Indonesia uh, location is a very important because most of the major seaborne trade passes through Indonesian waters. And this Belt and Road initiatives is just perfect because it complements our priority programs. And I think with closer cooperation with China, we probably can benefit each other. Does it also relate to the opening up of the ASEAN economic community? Because that's a new formation, if you like. And would you see, therefore, that, the AEC, developing in conjunction with the Belt and Road? Yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, with the ASEAN economic community being effective as of early this year, we can expect a much bigger intra-ASEAN trade as well as trade between ASEAN and other countries, particularly China. So with the increase in trade, you know, it is mandatory that we also improve our infrastructure. Now you're also the founder of Satmarindo, which is one of the country's largest conglomerates. What do you see the role of Satmarindo as being? You know, Indonesia has a lot of challenges, a lot of needs. We are still importing a lot of our basic requirements like food, like fuel. So there is a lot of opportunities. And here is where I think Satmarindo would like to work together with our partners in China, perhaps, to build and form a joint venture to meet all these demands. Is that across the fields? In other words, things like energy, like agriculture, like mining, property, the whole works? The whole spectrum. You know, just take food, for instance. Uh, Indonesians now consume only three kilogram of beef per year compared to Australia, 50 or 60. Uh, compared to Malaysia, that's already close to 20. So there is a lot of potential. We also need to build our capability in logistics. That is one of the critical problems that's causing the cost of logistics so very expensive in Indonesia. There are plans to build 24 ports, for instance, airports, toll roads, and all these things are opportunities. Okay, what would you think about Hong Kong? I mean, is Hong Kong really the super connector that people are talking about? Yes, given its strategic location, given its expertise that you have here in Hong Kong, I think Hong Kong can play a very important role as a facilitator, middleman, as the one that can arrange financing for some of these programs, these projects that we would like to do. And being at the Belt and Road Summit here, which is very much a, a first summit, what's your rating of this particular event, would you say? I am most impressed. Uh, it was so well organized. We have very good speakers, resources. It's very informative and I certainly like to see this to be repeated every year. I think it will be very useful for us.